Good morning, good morning, good morning, Bridge family. Good morning, everybody. How many of y'all are grateful this morning? Are you grateful this morning? Oh my goodness. We're going to pray for those on their way.
brokenness, amen? We have true love instead of pain, amen?
goodness, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's your goodness, Lord. The goodness of our God. God is so good. Amen. As someone of faith, when we come to the house of God, we have to look back on all the things that God has been good uh, to us. He's been, he's been helping us through life. He's been blessing us. When we fall short, God is still there. His faithfulness and his goodness follows you for your entire life. Please be encouraged this morning as we sing this. Hallelujah. Te amo Dios, tu amor me nunca fallas, mi existir en tus manos está. Cada momento en que despierto, hasta el noche sé, yo cantaré de la bondad de Dios.
for your grace, for your mercy, for running after us, Lord God. We bless your holy name in this place. You're worthy of our praise this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, for meeting us here, Lord God. We thank you for the service moving forward, for the sermon that is to come, Lord God. We ask you to continue to anoint our hearts and minds, Lord God, and allow us to receive, Lord God. We love you, Jesus. We adore you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Good morning, my name is Mario. I serve here at the bridge as one of the children's church directors for downtown along with my wife, Janelle, and I'm also a next facilitator. Welcome to the bridge. And if this is your first time joining us, we would like to give you a warm welcome. And thank you so much for being here with us at the bridge. Just to tell you a little bit about the bridge, our vision is to see God do great things in and through us. The bridge is a diverse, life-giving church that seeks to make local, national, and global impact. Our purpose is found in our motto, to love God, love others, find purpose, and make a difference. If this is your first time, I invite you to the welcome station for a free gift at the end of our worship experience. Hey, Bridge family, I'm Destiny. I serve on Oxygen's the youth ministry team, as well as the production team. I have a couple ongoing announcements for you all. I wanna invite you guys to Oxygen's youth worship experience happening every second and fourth Sunday next to Downtown Kids, where we worship, fellowship, get in our word, and you know, just have a good time. I hope to see you on a Sunday. Next, I wanna let y'all in on a little secret. Oxygen Youth Nights happen once a month here at the bridge. The location varies, so make sure you're following our Instagram page at We Are Oxygen DC. There we fellowship, we continue to get to know each other on a deeper level, and we learn about the Lord, like, and we eat good. We eat good. So make sure you come on through. I hope to see you there. In the same way, you wives, be subject to your own husbands, so that even if any of them are disobedient to the word, they may be won over without a word by the behavior of their wives, as they observe your pure and respectful behavior. Your adornment must not be merely the external, braiding the hair, wearing gold jewelry, or putting on apparel, but it should be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit which is precious in the sight of God. For in this way, the holy women of former times who hoped in God also used to adorn themselves, being subject to their own husbands, just as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, and you have proven to be her children if you do what is right without being frightened by any fear. You husbands in the same way, live with your wives in an understanding way as with someone weaker since she is a woman and show her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life so that your prayers will not be hindered to sum up all of you be harmonious sympathetic loving compassionate and humble not returning evil for evil or insult for insult but giving a blessing instead for you were called for the very purpose that you would inherit a blessing going to get into it today. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Oh, y'all son. I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyway, we are, this is your first time here. My name is Jim and Joan. I'm the lead pastor here at the bridge. And we are doing this series, or we're in the midst of this series called Aliens. Um, and it comes, and we're walking through First Peter. 
and in first Peter Peter addressed the audience as aliens uh, meaning that they are citizens of heaven even though that they dwell here on earth and as aliens as foreigners spiritually that God has called us to represent him and to reflect him in ways that sometimes can be countercultural. So we've been talking about that. And so last week we started looking at Peter really challenging his audience to reflect honor. And he started off by talking about how to reflect honor outside of the home. And the interesting thing is that this was during the time, it was an Asia Minor, and he wrote this letter, and it went to different churches in Asia Minor. And he started talking about these specific roles that they were to operate in as they are facing persecution. So this is in the midst of being ostracized for their faith. This is the, the time that they're being criticized by their coworkers, by their masters, governing officials, even their spouses as they face persecution. And so last week we look at their role as citizens. And so he said, look, that as citizens that you have to honor those that are governing officials. And speaking about citizens, I want to encourage everyone here today that if you have uh, the opportunity to vote, please go out and vote. I can't tell you who to vote for. But I want to encourage you to vote. So don't get in your feelings saying, I'm not voting for anybody. I don't like any of the candidates. I don't like. Please, please exercise your right to vote. Just get out there and vote if you haven't done. Can we do that? Can we vote? Come on, vote. 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 And then you don't want the person, you know, you wanted to, to, to win. And then they won by one vote. You said, man, I should have voted. <laughs> Just being, you know kidding about that. But he talked about their role as citizens. Then he talked about their role as servants, right? He said that servants, um, obey your masters. Uh, we talked about that. And then Peter talked about Christ as being the example of how Christ, that he submitted himself as he was being crucified on the cross. Now, the interesting thing, as you look at these passages, just in case you may have wondered about the tension here, that Peter, at least in this, this, this book, that he placed uh, more of an emphasis on giving instructions to those who were in roles that typically had less power, were more vulnerable, and probably were being more marginalized than facing persecution. So for example, you see him focusing more so on those who were servants than giving instructions to masters. You see him where he gave more instructions to citizens versus governing officials, and then not because those roles weren't important, but because Peter really wanted to lean in on those who were being more marginalized, those who were more vulnerable, um, so that he can speak life into them. And you're going to see today that we're going to look at roles of spouses, and you're going to see the same thing as well, too, where there's a major emphasis placed on the role of a wife, and then the husband probably get about like one or two um, sentences. So we're going to look at it holistically is because he wanted to lean into the role of the wife because more than likely they were being ostracized, that they were facing persecution, not only outside, but inside their home as well, right? And so here's a, so sort of like the big picture that we're going to talk about today is really about making sure that we show honor at home in the same way that we show honor outside the home. Right? So this is the thing that I found with, with married couples. It's not that we don't know how to love. It's not that we don't know how to be humble. It's not that we don't know how to be sacrificial. However, we can find ourselves being more loving, more honoring, more sacrificial outside the home than inside the home, right? So, so, for example, when Peter talked about with, you know, how that looks in your business relationship with masters and with the governing officials, because here's the thing that many of us, many of us, we don't want to get in trouble with the law and we don't want to mess up our job, right? Like, we don't want to get fired and we don't want to get in trouble with the law. But here's the thing, but at home, the ramifications is not the same. Right? So, so I can say whatever I want to say to you as my spouse. So you can say whatever you want to say to me as my husband, and I can't fire you. That's not going to mess up the money. And that's not going to put me in jeopardy with the law. And so it's always easier to take advantage of those 
who really are there for us because sometimes if we're honest, we're trying to impress those that are outside the home, right? And so what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about how this looks like, how does honor look like if you are married? So if you're here today and you're married, I want you to lean in. If you're here and you're single and you desire to be married one day, I want you to lean in as well, right? So how should we view marriage as aliens? Here's the thing about the thing about marriage. Marriage is a beautiful institution. Like God created that. God created marriage to reflect his relationship with the church. As a matter of fact, Jesus Christ referred to the church as his bride. Like he uses the term like he is our husband, he's the bridegroom, and we are his bride. He loves his bride. He takes care of his bride. But in Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, Ephesians sort of talk about how does marriage look like? How does a husband and a wife, how they relate to each other? And the first thing he said in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, he says when it comes to the church that we are to submit to one another in fear of Christ. The term submit there means to give deference to. So here's how this looks like. If you're probably going out to eat with other believers, right? Just say, for example, there's five or six of you, and maybe you're saying you want to try out this new burger spot. Like, you've been saying to yourself, oh, I want to go to this new burger spot. And so you're, so you're planning, you say, hey, let's all of us go to this burger spot. But everybody says, no, nah, we don't want to do that. There's this other restaurant that, you know, we all want to check out. Is that cool with you? 99% of the time, you will say, yeah, that's cool. That's submission. That's what submission looks like. Like, look, you said, you know, I really want to go to this burger spot. I really been, been dreaming and thinking about it all night. But since this is where everybody wants to go, then I will go along. I would submit to everyone, right? What a lot of people don't do is to say, well, you know what? You all go to the new restaurant. I'm going to the burger spot. If you all don't want to the burger, I'm going alone, right? And so because we understand the importance of submission and fellowship, and the importance of unity in the body of Christ. So it says, first of all, in the body of Christ, that we are to submit to one another. Somebody has a need, you recognize a need. Somebody has a want, you recognize a want. Right? You don't come in and say, this is my agenda, but you're willing to listen and to submit to one another. And then he goes in to talk about how this looks like in marriage, right? And as a matter of fact, when it gets to the role of the wife in Ephesians 5, it doesn't even literally says, wives, submit to your husbands. It says, Submit to one another and wives to your husband. In other words, this same submission that we should already be doing to each other. Now, Paul is saying, now bring this into the home, right? So you're not creating this kind of new weird thing, right, that is not operating anywhere else. So he's saying, look, in the same way that you submit to your employer, and they said, look, I need that project by 5 p.m., and you said, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, in the same way that when you're hanging out with your friends, and everybody says, we're going to this restaurant, and you said, no, I wanted to try this other restaurant, but that's cool. What Paul is saying now, bring the same attitude into your home. Why? Because you have to recognize your husband as being the head of the home. He says, wife, submit to your husbands, but not just submit to your husbands, but submit to your husbands as to the Lord. In other words, as to the Lord becomes the filter by which you submit. So if a husband is saying, hey, can you just get on the phone and lie for me? He said, look, I can't lie on your behalf because I'm not just submitting, I'm submitting as to the Lord. So I'm not going to do something unrighteous and sinful because then you can't say, well, no, the Bible says to submit, not just submit blindly. I submit as to the Lord. And pleasing as unto him. And then he says, submit to husbands as church submits to Christ. Right? So in the same way that we recognize Jesus is our Lord, we submit to him as our Savior. It's in the same way that the wife recognizes that the husband is the head of the home, and so she submits to his leadership. Then it says... In, in Ephesians 5, 25 through 33, right? So then Paul, in this passage, he gives us like eight verses. Now, he goes in deep with the husbands. And he says, husbands, you ought to love wives, your wives, as Christ loves the church. So he say, okay, now, it's not just, okay, your wife submit to you. But then he said, look, you need to love her as Christ of the church. But how does Christ love the church? He gave his life for the church. He sacrificed for the church. He forgives gives 
the church. He loves the church unconditionally. He washes us with the word of God. And so in the same way, you are to love your wife with the same kind of love. To sacrifice yourself for her, to, 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 to die for her, to forgive her, to cover her, to wash her. Right? So we are to love or we're called to love our wives as Christ loves the church. And please listen to me. It is always easier for a wife to submit to a husband that loves her as Christ loved the church. So we are to lay our life down, and it's always easier to submit to a dead man. But the problem is a lot of husbands don't want to die to self. So we're called to love a wife as Christ loved the church. And then he says, Love your wives as your own body in the same way that you take care of your own body. In the same way that you make sure that you get a fresh haircut every week. In the same way that you make sure that you go to the gym and make sure that you're fit. In the same way that you make sure that when you step out of your home that you are clean, that you have on cologne. You make sure that you have on drip. Is in the same way you take care of yourselves like that. You also have to love your wife like your own body. Because she is. So you love her as Christ loved the church, and then you love her as Christ of the body. And one of the reasons why wives don't get the type of love that she needs is because of two reasons. Number one, we're not close enough to Christ to even know how he loves. So how can I love my wife as Christ loved the church if I don't even understand how Christ loves the church? And then sometimes we don't even like our own body. So how can I love my wife as I do my own body if I don't even love myself? Does that make sense? So Paul says, okay, submit to one another. And then wives, submit to your husband in the same way that we're all called to submit to one another. And in the same way, husband, love your wife as Christ of the church. In the same way that you love your body. But look what it says. That there ought to be mutual submission in, it, watch this, in the entire body. So if you are part of the church as a husband and you are part of the church as a wife, then there comes times where that submitting to one another includes your wife. Right? Have you ever sacrificed yourself for your wife? Your wife says, look, I do not want to go to tour the rainforest. Can we go to the beach? And you say, well, I'm, baby, I'm trying to lead. Can you let me lead? And you say, please, I just want to go to the beach. This is the last day. Can we go to the beach? And so you said, okay. Okay, baby. We'll go to the beach. Did you just sacrifice or submit? Ah, you see, you see, you see. So leading is sacrifice, and sacrifice is also submitting. Yeah, I only heard one. Huh? So Y'all see where I'm going? <laughs> All right, so, so this is how. So now we get to 1 Peter chapter 3, and 1 Peter chapter 3 is really kind of different here. Peter put a different spin on it because this is now marriages as they are facing persecution, right? So now, so now the environment is tense. So how does this look like when there's persecution going on? So now, he first of all starts talking about the wives. He said, in the same way, you wives be submissive to your own husbands. He says, first of all, the first term he used is the term homoios, which means likewise. Like what? If you look at the context... Likewise, like what? Like how Christ suffered. Like how we're called to submit to the governing officials. In the same way that we're called to submit to our masters, right? Those who, those, those who, 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 who employ us, right? Is in the same way that you bring this attitude and you bring this sense of submission and you bring it into the home. Please listen to me. Because this happens a lot in homes. Now, outside the home, whatever you tell me to do, I'll do. But inside the home, you're not telling me anything. I come home when I feel like coming home. And, 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 this, is, and, and this, this is sometimes the tension. I know you're going to raise your hands, but has this ever happened to you? Your wife or your husband is bucking you, won't sacrifice, 
won't love, won't submit, won't listen. And you know what I'm talking about? Where, where things are, and then the phone rings. And then they get on the phone and say, hey, how you doing? Now, oh, we smiling now. Oh, what time? Oh, oh what, what, what time? When, when y'all getting together? Oh, oh, I, oh, so we're not doing Cheesecake Factory again? Fridays? Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Oh, so you, oh, so you can submit to, oh, so you can sacrifice for them. But when I ask you to sacrifice for me, you know, you know what I'm talking about? You see, 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 married people are not going to, but I'm telling you, when that phone rings, it's a different us. Right, so 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 now so now my wife asked me, can you can you just run down? We just go downstairs in the kitchen. Can you just 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 get me some tea? Dag, I'm so tired. You're so insensitive. And as soon the boys, oh, what 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 time what, what time y'all moving? Oh yeah yeah yeah, I'm here. I'm there. Whenever y'all need me. Oh, so you so you can help your boys move, and lift a bunch of equipment. And I ask you to go downstairs and get me one little box. And you acting like I'm, I'm not getting a lot of amens. It's all good. Because it's true. And it's always easier to show honor outside the home. Now, the thing is, how do I bring that honor in? So, anyway, so wives submit to your husbands in the same way. Jesus sacrificed. And then, and then he says, here is why. And Peter gives the reason. So that even if any of them are disobedient to the word, they may be won without the word by the behavior of their wives. So here's what was happening. So as individuals were coming to Christ, as women were coming to know Christ, that now that they're in a situation where they now have husbands who are not in the faith. Some of us experience this as well, right? So we give our life to Christ, and now we find ourselves with a husband that do not have a relationship with the Lord. Well, during this time, this created tension. And sometimes what the husband would do is that he would ostracize and criticize the wife because of her faith. You know, all these jabs, oh, you all holy now, you all righteous, you know, you all into the church, you know, laughing at her, she reading her Bible. You know, you know who, you, who you praying to? I thought you all, you go ahead and pray to that guy. Y'all, y'all crazy, right? And so she have to deal with all of that. So, so then the question is, if, if he don't want to accept my faith and he want to criticize me for my faith, then how should I respond to him? Because now, I don't think I should be submitting to him. But why should I not submit to a husband that don't even serve the Lord? And you'd be surprised how many women, watch this, that they will start walking with the Lord, and their husband don't have a relationship with the Lord, and they're trying to figure out, how do I get out of this marriage? Because I need to be in the marriage with a man who is anointed, with a man who is called. Like, I can't, I can't sit up under demonic leadership. Peter said, no, you can't, you, you can't roll out of the marriage. Now you found the Lord. But what you do is, is you still submit, you, you recognize his role as the, hus as the husband, as the head of the home. And as long as he doesn't ask you to do anything that's ungodly, you, you submit. You recognize his leadership. Because a lot, if we, if we really look at it, a lot of what makes a marriage work, if we, if, if we really pay attention to it, is really natural things. It's like communication, conflict resolution, finances. That's a lot of what we deal with. And, and, and you know, how do we take care of the children? What school do they go to? You know, are we going to have them to do dance? It's all of this other stuff. And as long as he's uh, asking you to cheat, not asking you to lie for him, he's not asking you to do anything sinful, recognize his leadership even if they're disobedient to the word of God. Why? So that they may be won without the word by your behavior. So Peter is saying this. That there is a way that your husband can be one. The term there, one, 
it means to gain. It has this, this sense of acquiring something financial. It's like hitting the lottery. He said the way, the way that you win, the way that you hit a lottery in your marriage is not by your words. It's not hounding him and make him feel bad because he's not walking with the Lord. It is by you living holy before him and giving him an opportunity to observe your lifestyle because this is the truth. There are some people, and it's not just in the home, there are some people that will observe your life first to see, should I trust in this Lord that they serve? So, so they're looking at you to see if your walk is authentic, because if your walk is authentic, then that could mean that the Lord you serve is authentic. So before they trust in Jesus, they're going to trust in you first. So don't miss that. So, 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 I'm, I'm, so I'm, 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 just, I'm, just, I'm just watching her to see how this whole faith thing is going to play out. And so it says, as they observe. The term observe means, it means to follow with one's eyes and to follow with one's mind is that they're following you with their eyes. They're watching, but as they are watching, they, they are processing and internalizing it even if you don't say anything. So he may not say, you know what? I saw you with your Bible two times this week. Okay, then he may not say that. He just watch it. So as he's smoking, as he's getting drunk, as he's doing his thing, he's also observing and watching. But the question is, what kind of wife does he see? And he says, here's what he needs to observe. Chaste and respectful behavior. Chaste, it means holy and respectful. We all know what that means. Respect. Every man desires respect. Even if he doesn't deserve it, even if he doesn't do anything to earn it, he wants to be respected. Every man wants to be respected. That was one of the things with Rod, you know, Rodney Dangerfield. Remember in the 80s, where's my respect? No respect. Right? And so look what he says. Your adornment must not be merely external. So I want you to underline that. I want you to highlight merely external. So he says, look, he's not saying you can adorn the outside. But that can't just be it. Because then he says... The braiding of the hair, wearing gold jewelry, putting on dresses, right? You ever seen that taken out of context? You get in a legalistic church and none of the Bible says, you know, don't braid your hair. Some of y'all wearing that ungodly makeup. Some of y'all wearing jet jewelry, yeah, like all, all out of context. Paul says that can't be the only thing because there's some people, listen, there are some people where their character is an inch deep. There's no character, no integrity, no holiness, but they're stepping out though, or they're, or they're gonna be chiseled. They're gonna be sharp, right? That they're gonna have on that, that Louis, like, listen, they're gonna be stepping out, but Peter is saying, what else do you have? Like, like when it boils down to it, like, like if, if you just focus on just the external and you don't have any character, what he will see is a woman that always looks good. She's always put together, but there's no character. Fellas, the same with us as well, too, because we have wives that are looking at us. And we look good, but other than that, other than that, where is my character? Where's my holiness? Where's my integrity? Where's my actual walk with the Lord? And then, then he says, please, let it be not just the external person, but the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable, there goes that word again, imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet Spirit. Now to pause there because that's another term that's being taken out of context. 
What does it mean by a gentle and quiet spirit? A gentle and quiet spirit means this. It's really saying chaste and fearful, right? So chaste, you're pure and holy, and fear, there's a reverence for the Lord. This is not personality or demeanor, please. This has nothing to do with the volume or the tone of how you talk. This has nothing to do with whether your language is polished or unpolished. It doesn't matter whether it sounds like you were born and raised in the suburbs or whether you were born and raised in the, in the city. You know what I'm talking about. So sometimes when people think of gentle and quiet spirit, they think suburban. They think polished. They think low tone. That's not what Peter is saying. Because listen, because you can be loud in tone and have a quiet and gentle spirit. He's talking about character. So a person that has a quiet and a gentle spirit is almost like calm water, right? That when you look at the Sea of Galilee, the Sea of Galilee is very calm. But when the wind starts to blow in it, then all of a sudden it becomes rocky and rough. And what Peter is saying here is don't allow the winds of the world, don't allow the winds of sin to stir up your spirit. So now dealing with you becomes rough. Dealing with you becomes filled with drama. And you can do this whether you yell or whether you whisper. You know, here's the thing about when a person is loud, because when you're loud, I get loud too. You're such an idiot. Who are you calling an idiot? I'm calling you an idiot. I know I'm not the only idiot around here. But have you ever been in a relationship with a quiet assassin? <laughs> she doesn't raise her tone. She just says, you know what I was thinking about today? I was thinking about how my husband is such an idiot. <laughs> so irresponsible. And then the thing, that you can't yell because she's not yelling. And the husband is like, baby, I'm trying my best. And she's like, that's your best? Wow. I hate to see your worst. And the house is stirred up. Tension. Peter said, don't, don't do that. Loud or quiet, but have the type of spirit, have the type of character that no matter what blows on your marriage, no matter what blows on your romance, that you don't allow your spirit to become disturbed where you are creating chaos. Here is why this is important. Because Peter saying, when you look at the context, there's already enough chaos outside the home. Your boss don't like you. The government don't like you. And so now you got chaos outside and inside the home. So, so at least bring some peace at home. So, 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 that, when, 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 so, so that when the workforce is rough, and dealing with governing officials are rough. There's peace in the home. So whether you laugh loud or laugh quiet, there's, there's laughter in the home. Do you understand what I'm saying? And he is saying, please, wives, I know what you're going through. I know you're being depressed. I understand that. But please don't allow it to vex your spirit. And then he uses the women of old in the Old Testament. He said, look at Sarah. Sarah called Abraham Lord. And if you look at Abraham's life, Abraham was the father of the faith. But Abraham didn't always make the right decisions. But Sarah still recognized him and called him Lord. It was a term of endearment. It was like saying, yes, honey. Yes, baby. And some of us, if, 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 if you're a man, Sometimes there's honey and there's honey. What do I mean by that? Sometimes just the way that she says it, you know it's loaded. Sometimes, you know what I'm talking about? When your wife said, that's okay, babe, 
that's okay, honey. You, you know, you know, okay, that there's the way how you just said that. You said it by recognizing that, that I'm the leader of the home. You said that you recognize that, 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 that I'm valuable. Just how she says it, you know it's loaded. So you ain't got to call me Lord. You know, don't mind me. I go in the Bible. So just, it's, it's just the demeanor, the respect, and the honor. And then he now jump in to say, okay, I got to deal with the husband. Then he said, husbands, in the same way, again, there's the same term. Likewise, like the same way she submits. Now, in the same way, he says, live with your wives in an understanding way. Husbands, please underline understanding way. We have to understand our wives. Your wife is not your boy's wife. Don't compare the two. I know what she likes. But what does your wife like? That's who you're married to. You need to live with her in an understanding way. And you'd be like, well, well, Kevin's wife is cool with it, but I'm not cool with it. So I got to understand that about my wife. You, you, it's, and so sometimes when a wife wants stuff, you're like, well, well you're being all materialistic. But listen, this is who you married. And maybe Susan and them, maybe they're cool with, you know, the furniture being from Walmart, but I'm just not that way. And you can get vexed all you want. You need to understand her and what she values and what makes her tick. You marry to her, not that girl on Instagram. It doesn't matter what she likes. What does your wife like? So now you're bringing home a bunch of chocolate and she keeps telling you, I don't like sweets. But dad, but they were on sale 50% off. So now you're mad because you bought all this stuff and she don't appreciate it. She don't appreciate her brother. I'm trying to step it up in my leadership. I'm trying to, well, well you won't understand her. Because if you understood, because she kept telling you, all I want you to do is take a day off and spend some time together. No, but I got to work. I got to be on my grind. I got to be on my hustle. So you're buying all this stuff, and ain't none of it hitting the target. I done bought Gucci. I done bought Louis. I done bought gift cards. And I don't understand what else she wants. She wants what she keep telling you she wants. A day off for you and her to chill. Yeah, but you won't understand, like, my cousin, like, he, he got this purse, and when she opened it, she was all over him. That's him. She not all over you because she don't want the purse. But she will be all over you if you just do what she wants. She just, just take a day off and spend time with her. That's what she wants. You need to understand your wife and deal with her in an understanding way. So now I got to be a student of my wife. I got to listen to her when she speaks. I remember one time there was, I bought, you know, definite a pair of earrings. You remember, baby? I bought her some pair. Uh, well, she was like, yeah, yeah. Anyway, these pair of earrings. And it was some ball earrings. And she was like, she's like, oh, how did you know? Because I remembered a few months ago. She said, man, she said it twice. I just want to get some ball earrings. And I, I wrote that joint down. Right? And I don't know, maybe for some other way, it may not be a big thing, for, but it was a big thing for her because at that moment, that's what she wanted. So can you just listen and pay attention in an understanding way? Look at this says, as with someone weaker since she is a woman. Let me, let me, just, let me just tell you what this means. The, the, the term someone there is, is really the term of vessel. And they're saying, the husbands, you need to deal with your wife as you would deal with a delicate vessel. It's, it's, it's like how you handle China. How do you handle China? Well, you don't handle China in the same way that you do a stainless coffee mug. A stainless coffee mug, sometimes you leave it in the garage. You just kind of just throw it up and down however you want, right? Because it's supposed to be durable. But with China... Right? China has its, its own suite in the house. Anytime it gets grimy, you polish it. You pull it out for special occasions. But when you pull it out, you, 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 you handle it delicately. Right? 
And when you're washing it, it may say, mash, it may say you know, machine warm. You say, no, 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 no. We're not washing this in the dishwasher. We're going to wash this by hand. I'm taking care of it because it is priceless. Scripture says, husbands, this is how you have to understand your wife. Please lean in. Please lean in. Please lean in. Let me, I don't want you to miss this. Your wife may not see herself that way. Because women, you know, when they think that they're strong, like, listen, I'm a boss. I ain't no China. I'm Stanley Cup. And you know what we do as men? We said, okay, yeah, yeah, my wife is a strong woman. And we put all the weight of life on her. Because she's strong. She got this. Finances, she got this. Organizing, she got this. Why? Because she's a strong woman. And then five years into it, what happens? You don't do anything around here. You don't, you, don't take, you don't organize. You don't clean. You don't pay attention to the money. It's I'm doing everything. Everything is falling on me. And then you're going to open up your mouth. But I thought you said, I thought you were a strong woman. I was like, you got this. Because she doesn't have to see herself as delicate China. You do. And what you do, regardless of how she sees herself, because you got to see yourself as a standing cup. You know what I'm saying? See yourself as stainless steel. But then you got to see yourself. You said, no, no, baby, I got this. I'll take care of this. I'm going to pamper you like China. I'm going to take care of you like China. And then one day she said, you take, you, you, man, you take so good care of me. Because you're my China. And I deal with my wife like I deal with costly vessels. And you don't throw around and beat her up like you would a stainless cup. You take care of her. You don't put your hands on her. You don't abuse her, physically or verbally. Well, she yelling at me first. As China. You take care of her. And you make sure that she feels and knows that she's valuable and honored. And listen to me, and men, men, because I'm growing in this too. The question is not whether or not you're honoring your wife. The question is, does she feel honored? Because the goal of honor is somebody feeling honored. And you may be trying to honor, but she may not feel honored. So the thing is, how do I lean in and understand her so that she feels prioritized and she feels honored? Isn't that deep? Good stuff, right? And then it says, and show her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life. So on one hand, I'm seeing her as delicate, so I'm taking care of her, but at the same time, she's my equal in the eyes of God, the imago Dei, the image of God. She's equally created in the image of God as you are. So her destiny is as important as yours. Her dreams are as important as yours. Her opinion is as important as yours. Her wisdom, her insight is as important as yours. I don't want to even get into what help make means. I'll get into it. I know we're over time. Let me tell you, the scripture says that a woman is called to be our helpmate. It's the term paraclete. It's the same term that is used of the Holy Spirit. And God will use your wife as your helpmate, like your helper, like the Holy Spirit to speak into your life. And some of us look at our wives, and she's telling us, baby, this is what we need to do. And you say, no, 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 I, I need to hear from the Lord. And could it be God said, I just spoke through your wife. The problem is, we don't want to accept, and, and this is the problem that she has, right? And then we watch some celebrity pastor say something on YouTube. Then we come on and we say, baby, 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 the Lord spoke to me. And then she said, I've been saying the same thing to you for the past six years. But now with T.D. Jakes in them, 
Now, all of a sudden, is a word from the Lord. So who do you honor more? Celebrity preachers or your wife? And don't think that she doesn't know. But she knows. <laughs> you got them all lined up. You got a whole playlist. Paraclete, help me God will send your wife into your life to help you to do supernaturally what you could not do in and by yourself. But you honor her as an equal heir in life. Y'all both have the same salvation. You don't get an extra dose of salvation because you're the head of the home. You're not extra saved. You saved just like she is. And you need to honor her like she is, equal in the eyes of God. And men have to avoid the temptation of showing understanding and honor and the love of Christ outside the home more than inside the home. Please, I'm speaking to myself too. Everybody gets the love. Everybody gets the understanding. Everybody gets the discipleship. Everybody else gets the... Everybody gets all of you. And what do they get at home? So listen as we close off. Listen to what to, to Peter's summary in verse 8 and 9. And I want you to, to, to sort of take this in as it applies to marriage. He says to sum it up, all of you be harmonious. Harmony in the marriage. Singing on the same key. Nobody's off key. When we sing, we are in harmony together. Is there harmony in your home? Sympathetic. Is there sympathy in the home? When one of us is going through, is there sympathy, understanding? Brotherly. Is there a sense of family at home? Kind-hearted? Humble in spirit? Verse 9. Not returning evil for evil or insult for insult. Please. Don't return evil for evil. Oh, he cheating? Well, he's going to see what cheating is. Oh, you insult me? Oh, I'm, oh, I'm coming for you. Peter says. But giving a blessing instead. For you were called for the very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. So we honor our side of home. Let's honor inside the home. Let's be harmonious, sympathetic, humble, honoring, submitting, loving. And can we die to self? so that Christ can live in our marriages. Father, we love you. We adore you. We give you praise. We thank you for who you are. And Father God, we pray that you would strengthen our marriages where it needs to be strengthened. Father God, wherever we have to grow, where we have to develop, I pray, Lord, that we would die to self, humble ourselves before you, so that new life can be resurrected. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we get God some glory? Can we get God some glory? Yeah. But right now we're going to prepare to receive our offerings. We're going to ask that you prepare to give today. If you're watching this online, we just want to say that we are thankful for your generosity. That um, we don't count it. Um, we count it a privilege that you continue to give here at the bridge Um Every, you know, uh, uh, that you continue to give at the bridge continuously. And if you're here in person, just know that we are also thankful for your generosity. And because of your giving, we're able to continue to love God, love others, to find purpose, and to make a difference because of your giving that we're able to not only make an impact inside our home, but outside of our home as well, too. So if you want to give today, there are several ways you can give. Um, you can give through the Bridge app. You can give, um, you can text to give. You can give online. 
online. If you're watching this online, you can click um, the giving men the giving button. If you're watching this on the church online platform, there's the menu right above the screen. You can click giving and that direct you in terms of where you can give. And of course, um, if you're not giving electronically, you can give right here in person and you can drop your giving off at the Your Welcome Station on your way out. We have some giving envelopes that you can place your giving in and we'll make sure that you receive credit for your giving at the end of the year. Amen. But let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We adore you. And Father Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you would help us to be the stewards you've called us to be as we pursue you. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Can you hear me? Okay, cool. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jermaine, for that message. Let, yeah, let's give it up for the message about submission. Mutual submission. Amen. I'm Shayi. I'm a volunteer here at the bridge, and I have just two announcements today. Um, let's have a drum roll if if the if the drummer is available. Sorry, <laughs> for Bridge Builder of the Month, and the Bridge Builder of the Month for November is Journey Reed Elliott. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. Give it up for Journey. At five, she may be small in size, but she's mighty in service. As a dedicated member of the Outreach and Missions Group, she's demonstrated a heart for the homeless she serves during the monthly McPherson Square Park Outreach on Saturday mornings. She consistently shows up with her mom, Jana, with a smile on her face and an eagerness in her hands to pass out toiletries and pray for those she encounters. Oh, oh! Journey's here. Yeah, so I I won't do we want Journey to Yeah, I'm sorry. We won't we won't embarrass you too much, but we know that Journey is here and so we are again honoring her. So her presence not only Okay, yeah, here she's coming up. Yay. Yeah, so can everyone see the photo? Oh, yeah, her presence not only blesses the people she serves, but also fellow bridge builders who serve with her. So Journey, let's give it up for Journey one more time. Thank you, Journey, for serving with joy, humility, and excellence. And I think this is just such a good reminder that, you know, service is not really about age. It's about a willingness to serve. So let's learn from the example of our kids in downtown who are serving already. Okay, so our very last announcement is just a quick one. Um, the setup and breakdown team is short today, so they need a few extra hands. So anybody who can take a few minutes to help out, whether you're male, female, you can do a little bit for a few minutes. That would be great just so that we can get everything packed up. Okay, let me turn it over to the praise team again. All right, all right. Y'all give it up for Journey one more time. Hallelujah. She is intentional at her young age, and that's what we're about to sing. All right, all right. Y'all can stand up as we prepare to be dismissed. You can stand on your feet as we prepare.
presence being made known. We thank you for the message, Father. May it carry us through the week and beyond, Lord God. Bless our families, friends, travel, Father. Thank you so much for your many, many blessings. It's in your name we pray. Amen. And just a reminder, set up and break down needs your help today directly after service. If you could just lend a hand. If you are able in your body, we would need you to help us to uh, break down the equipment today. We would really, really appreciate it. Thank you. That's it. You are dismissed. Those of you who are sticking around, please stick around. We appreciate it.